Hey guys. Today we're taking a look at our notes for center of gravity. So, uh, center of gravity, what is it? Uh, is the well, we'll use these two these two terms kind of interchangeably. There is a small difference between the two of them, with the difference between a center of mass and a center of gravity. The center of mass is just the point where the body can be balanced in the uniform gravitational field, aka it's the average point of where most of the mass is concentrated. Our center of gravity is a little bit different. We we kind of visualize the center of gravity as being a single point where all of that weight is assumed to be located. So the center of mass and the center of gravity are usually, almost always, exclusively the same exact point. It's just that the center of mass is where that average is for the amount of mass in that object. The center of gravity is just where, if we draw like force diagrams or different applications to it, that single point where all of the weight of that object is acting on. So it might not necessarily be where all of the weight is, because maybe if you're standing there, you know, you've got the weight acting through your feet. But the center of gravity is that point where the center of mass is that we're just going to imagine all of that weight being located through. <clears throat> so if we look at kind of what center of gravity is, um, some questions that we'll, we'll answer here. Um, why doesn't the Leaning Tower of, T of Pisa topple over? How far can it lean before it topples over? And then why is it impossible for us to stand with our back to our heels against the wall and bend over and touch our toes without toppling forward? Well, the answer to all of this is the center of gravity. Uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa doesn't topple over because the center of gravity is still over its support base. Um, and that's the same reason why it, you can actually try this if you want to. If you want to pause the video and go and find a wall, um, you can go and stand with your heels against the wall, your butt against the wall. You would bend over and you can't, you can't touch your toes without starting to fall forward. Because, as we'll see in a little bit, the location of our center of mass, of our center of gravity for um, human beings, as soon as we get that extended over our base, we uh, lose control and are not able to control ourselves. We'll fall forward. Um, so we, we dealt with kind of center of mass, center of gravity stuff with the, des sorry, the gizmo from uh, Monday and Tuesday being just the average point of where most of the mass is. So you can see some different examples here. If we have some unbalanced, um, this is just two masses attached with a, a stick in between. Um, when you have a really big mass on one side and a smaller mass on the other side, that center of mass tends towards where most of the mass is, so it's not necessarily centered on the stick, unless those two masses are equivalent. So here in this middle one, my two masses, M1 and M2, are basically the same size, so my center of mass is in the center. Um, but if you have any kind of unbalanced uh, masses that it tends towards where most of the mass is, hence the center of mass. If you have a uniform object, meaning we have a, a regular shape, it could be, um, you know, a, a prism like we have here with our textbook, it could be a sphere with a bowling pin or anything like that, or sorry, a bowling ball. Um, if you have a uniform shape, if you have a uniform object, the midpoint, which is the geometric center, is where that center of gravity is. It's that single point where you could balance an object on just that point. When we don't have a uniform object is where it gets a little bit tricky. Locating where that center of gravity is depends on how the mass is distributed. So we can look at kind of how, like in, in our three different dimensions, at where that mass averages both vertically, horizontally, and then depth-wise, so in all three of our different axes. So you can see here in, in this human model, forward and backward, um, usually happens right, right below the belly button line. So, you know, top to bottom where the mass is located. Um, left to right in terms of where we are is much easier because it just follows down the center of your body from, you know, from the nose down through the belly button is where that center is located left to right. And then depth wise, it's just in front of your shoulders usually Obviously, depending on what your body looks like, um, and you know what that where, where all of your mass is distributed, whether you've got really big, broad shoulders or you're bigger in the hips, um, you know that's going to kind of change where that location is. But again, it's still going to be the center of gravity of, of all three of those different points. So you could that's one way that you could figure it out. You could look at kind of on a balance board how far up and down your your center of balance is, how far left and right it is, and then how far. Uh, forward and backward it is as well, where those three lines intersect would be right where that center of gravity is.
Um, if we have a shape like a donut here, uh, a, uh, a lifesaver um, flotation device, you could have a center of gravity being uh, a point where there isn't actual material. Um, it could be an imaginary spot where we have no nothing to actually balance it on. So like if I was trying to use that center of gravity to balance something on a stick or on a finger, you know, I'm trying to spin it to try and get it to stay where it's at. Um, here in this shape, our center of gravity, our center of mass, the average of all of this ring, this whole, uh, this, this whole ring would be right in the middle where there isn't actual material, which is fine. That's totally, totally okay and totally, you know, an option. It's just that we won't have anything to attach to or balance on if that is the case. But nothing to be worried about. All right, so locating the center of gravity of people. I know we already talked about this a little bit, but going into a little bit further of depth, um, when you are standing erect, so when you're standing up and down with your arms hanging at your side, the center of gravity is within your body. And for most people, it's just a couple of centimeters below your navel, so below your belly button, halfway between the front and back. So again, it's on that center line of yourself, but just a couple of centimeters below your belly button. Um, and again, uh, midway between your the depth of yourself. So kind of right at where your gut is, is where that center of mass is. Now, depending on, uh, again, we talked about body shape, um, but in general, men versus women, and also children have slightly different centers of, of gravity. Um, in general, women have a center of gravity that's lower um, in their body because in general, again, just biologically, they're a little bit wider, more in the hips where men have a higher center of gravity because in general, we have much broader shoulders compared to women. And the same thing kind of applies to children. Theirs is actually higher than both men and women because in children, their like their skeletal structure hasn't developed as much as either of ours have. But in general, they have shorter legs as they're still growing and they have much larger heads proportionally. So their center of gravity ends up being higher because their legs are shorter, which shifts it up, and then their heads are even bigger um, compared to the rest of their body. So that shifts it up again. So a little bit interesting on where that is, which kind of tells you in terms of the hierarchy of balance, which we'll talk about in a second, um, those who are more likely to fall versus less likely to fall, just in general, I'm not talking about klutziness, but kids, uh, children have a much higher likelihood of falling because their center of gravity is so high. And the same thing for men. Women in general usually have better balance um, than men do because their center of gravity is lower to the ground. Um, can an object have more than one center of gravity? For a rigid object, so for something that has a set structure that is not malleable, flexible, or movable at all, you're going to just have one center of gravity. And it's going to be a set place, one spot where you can find the average of all that mass. Now for non-rigid objects, like a piece of clay, maybe some Play-Doh, or something that has some kind of movement mechanism to it, um, where you might be able to move the mass around of that object and adjust the shape of it, that center of gravity, that center of mass can uh, shift around to adjust for um, that movement. But at any given time, you only have one center of gravity. So even as it moves around, as the shape adjusts, it's still only gonna have a single point where that center of gravity is happening. It's just that it might be able to move around. All right, so toppling, which we talked about with balance just a second ago with um, where that center of gravity is. So in an object, when a center of gravity, um, when the center of gravity is above the area of the base, so the area of support, meaning like on a person, the feet, you know, the feet that you're standing on with your base, you know, your legs spread out or wherever they're at, as long as your center of gravity, so that, again, that spot just below your belly button, as long as that's still over your feet, it's not extended out beyond your support base, then your object is gonna stay upright. So you are gonna stay upright. As soon as that center of gravity moves out beyond the support base, it no longer is able to support itself and it's gonna to topple over, it's gonna fall over. So if we imagine the Leaning Tower of Pisa, again, it's not toppling over because that center of gravity doesn't extend beyond the base. So the tower has stood for centuries because 
again, where that center of gravity is, where that average mass is for the leaning tower of Pisa, if you draw vertically where that mass is acting to based on gravity, it's still over the base that is still attached to the ground. Um, some interesting thoughts here um, that maybe you, you subconsciously do, um, but maybe didn't realize this is why you do it. Have you ever carried something really, really heavy? Like maybe you've got a ton of groceries, or like if you guys are doing stuff outside and you're carrying like a big bucket of water or, or dirt or whatever it is that you're doing stuff and, and working on stuff outside. If you ever like done that and carried a really heavy bucket of water or, or whatever, you kind of naturally extend one of your arms out, maybe without even realizing that you're doing it, and you kind of lean down. What you're doing when you're extending that arm out horizontally is trying to shift your center of gravity or shift your center of mass over so that it's further like towards where you're used to walking. Because as soon as you pick up that really, really heavy load, as soon as you pick up that, um, that bucket of water or whatever you're carrying, there's so much mass there on that side of your body that it's actually shifting your center of mass, shifting your, your average mass over towards where that bucket is. So when you extend your arm out further, you're extending your mass out in the opposite direction to try and shift that center of mass back to where you're used to having it, where you're used to, you know, having that support underneath your feet, which is kind of cool that without consciously thinking about it, we just naturally do that to try and adjust for that happening, that action of being able to support that extra heavy weight, which is fun. <clears throat> Um, again, this is another reason why, depending on what uh, like what sport you're doing or what activity you're doing, why we adjust our base, why we lower ourselves down to try and stop ourselves from being knocked over, from being you know from being tackled. If we're trying to have a, a, a strong base, whether it's you know in basketball, you know you're fielding grounders in softball or baseball, um, you know you're you're doing a bump in volleyball. You always kind of widen your base and lower yourself to try and add that stability, to add that that sense of not being able to be toppled over. And that's all based on the center of gravity. Um, for a wrestler who's trying to stop being um, knocked over or taken down, they spread their, their feet out and they bend their knees because that's extending their support base. They're making that base wider, so their, their center of gravity has more to be supported by, but also lowering their knees is again, lowering it down closer to the ground, which um, kind of stops it from being toppled over as well. Um, so other interesting things, kind of the same idea we we're talking about with kind of extending our arm when we're carrying a really heavy load, having that movable thing, like our arm being extended is why tails are so important with balance with animals. Um, there, there's some animals that might use their tails for actually grabbing and supporting themselves or hanging from, but in general, especially like in cats and felines and stuff, they'll use that, that tail to kind of counterbalance themselves. If you ever see a cat trying to like walk all nimbly bimbly um, on a really, really like narrow walkway or they're trying to balance themselves on like some books or you're crawling over furniture, as they start going through and moving around, you'll see that tail kind of adjust itself. And it's actually a really, really fine way of adjusting where that center of mass is in their body to be able to extend and, and walk some different places and, you know, maybe some things that we couldn't necessarily do because we don't have that way of adjusting it without giving up one of our appendages, which is, which is cool. And that's why animals are able to shift that center of gravity to be able to do those things that they do. All right. So we've talked about toppling. Um, in dealing specifically with a phrase called stability, stability is just basically how likely it is for an object to topple. So it's a measure of maintaining equilibrium, how difficult it is to displace that object from where it is. Um, and we've got three different levels of um, equilibrium. We have unstable equilibrium, meaning the center of gravity is lowered anytime you move the object. So um, and we'll, I'll give some examples of what each of these look like, but unstable means from where it's at now, you're going to take that center of gravity and lower it down closer to the ground anytime you move that object. You, we have stable equilibrium, meaning in order to move that object, 
the center of gravity has to be raised. You're gonna have to pick it up in some way in order to move that object. If it's if that's required, then that means that object was stable. It was stable, you have to pick it up in order to move it. Unstable means any kind of movement is gonna cause that object to fall, is gonna cause that object center of gravity to lower. We also have neutral equilibrium, which is a little bit harder to visualize, but in this case, any kind of movement, any kind of displacement of the object is not gonna raise my center of gravity, it's not gonna lower my center of gravity, it's gonna maintain that same center of gravity for where it's at in terms of the height. So the easiest thing that I can use to, to kind of explain equilibrium with a single object is with a cone. With a cone, if you have the cone sitting on its base, so it's sitting on a circular base, that is a stable equilibrium. Because the only way I'm gonna move this cone is by picking it up if I try and flip it over, this center of gravity, this blue dot here, I'm gonna to have to pick that up. It's gonna to have to get raised in order for any kind of movement to happen. So if I'm gonna try and you know flip it over, it's gonna require some kind of energy, it's gonna require some kind of work to be done in order to raise that center of gravity, meaning that it is a, in stable equilibrium right now. It is not gonna move, right? This is hard to knock over, at least compared to some of the other ones we've seen, or we're going to see. Um, this one would be an unstable equilibrium. If we look at our cone where it is right now, um, on its point, if we balanced it up on the point, if we were able to get it that way, it is very difficult to do that. Right? We have to be very precise and get that center of gravity directly over the point of our cone in order to get it to stay that way. So that's why in this one, this is unstable equilibrium because it's unstable. It's very, very difficult to keep it that way, meaning it's easier to lower it. If you bumped this, if you hit this at all, it's gonna fall over onto its side, and that is why it's unstable. Any kind of movement, any kind of displacement of my cone is gonna lower my center of gravity from where it is down and knocking it over. Our third one is the hardest to visualize, but with a cone, and I should have rotated this picture a little bit, with a cone, if it's on, if it's not on the base, and it's not on the point, if it's on its side, if you hit the cone, it's gonna kind of roll around in a circle, right? If this was the tip, if this was on the ground, and this was also it, so this kind of place where I'm tracing my, my mouse back and forth on, if that side was laying down, if you hit the cone, if you bumped it, if anything, it's gonna roll around in a circle, right? It's gonna just kind of rotate around. But that center of gravity, that center of mass, isn't raising, it isn't lowering, it's just forming the circle. But in terms of the height, it's not changing at all, so that is neutral equilibrium, meaning it's not necessarily easy to knock over, but it's also not necessarily difficult to move, it's kind of a neutral. So those are our three different options for levels of stability. Uh, a couple of last thoughts here. Uh, in skyscrapers, something that's really interesting that we don't really think about on how skyscrapers are able to be constructed with the, such great heights that they are, is because skyscrapers are actually built in a way that they're, the parts that are underneath the ground, their, their structure, their foundations, are so low down in the ground that the center of gravity is actually below the surface. So like the, the Space Needle here from Seattle, most skyscrapers and stuff, they're built in, with such strong foundations and such deep foundations that the center of gravity is actually below ground level. So then it's not gonna be possible for them other than engineering failures of materials and stuff like that to be toppled over. Otherwise, if we had these really tall skyscrapers and they were just built with just a flat platform on the bottom, just sitting there, as soon as you have some strong winds or as soon as you have any kind of impact or you know, tornadoes or, or, or uh, earthquakes, any kind of movement, as soon as that, that base gets extended out over, or sorry, the center of gravity gets extended out over its base, it's gonna start to topple over. So that's kind of cool that they, they root it so down, just so deep down in the ground that the center of gravity is actually below the surface. So it's not gonna be possible for it to be toppled over by, by natural means at least. All right, that's all I got for you for today. This last slide um, has 10 questions on it. I did put together a Google Doc that just has these same 10 questions. Um, so you don't have to worry about copying these down, but these are gonna be your 10 questions for homework um, for this section. So just some basic stuff on center of gravity, on equilibrium and that kind of stuff. Um, 
So if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, ideas, hopes, or dreams, as always, make sure you guys are reaching out and let me know. Otherwise, have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys soon.